All right, internet. I'm gonna teach you guys everything I know that's important about this character, Feng Wei. Um, so the first thing I guess we should talk about is what type of a character he is and how good he is. So most characters in the game have like a primary range that they should stay at. Like, um, you know, a lot of characters are in close characters. Some characters are a little bit further, like around here, like Jack. Uh, and then like dragon off is about this range but the interesting thing about this character is that you can play him at any range he's dangerous at any range because in close he's a very good poke character with lots of uh, great tracking uh, safe pokes that um, the opponent can't really avoid too easily and not to mention when you're at this range he has lots of evasive stuff so if they try to counter poke I mean you're gonna get fucked no matter what I mean until you get hit by a hop kick because you're using lows and stuff so basically he's dangerous and close from approximately this range which is like jack six uh, dragon off range you have great tools like forward three four for whiff punishing you have back one plus two for whiff punishing and you have a reliable low down back three you have this low from this range and it's super fucking reliable i mean this thing tracks both directions at the tip and it's just a fantastic low um before i go any further with lows i just want to go over my philosophy on unseeable lows so this move for example down back three it's like a key move for this character from this range and even in close but it is launch punishable on block so it's minus 15 on block I think at least maybe 16 but since this low is unseeable technically if it ever gets blocked it was a guess and what that means is if they block this low that's your bad that's not the lows fault because the low is unseeable so if you get it blocked and you get launched that means you suck and stop doing lows when they're ducking it's don't blame the low I don't ever like hearing people say oh down back three is no good because it's launch punishable just do it when they're fucking standing and you never have a problem it's not like they can see it so there you go and this applies with any low in the game that's unseeable I mean for uh, Fang you have down two you have down four any one of his lows that are unseeable and in my opinion a seeable low is at approximately more than 20 frames so 21 and more usually a good player will see it but 20 frames and less is usually unseeable and it's kind of foggy in the middle like if the if the guy's kind of shitty you know he's gonna be he's gonna not see a 21 frame low but and then if the guy is like super fucking sharp you know maybe a 20 frame or a 19 frame low he'll be able to visually see on occasion but the point is that if you got a low that's unseeable it's your bad if it gets blocked don't blame the low for safety anyway so that's about this range you have this low you have shoulder you got sidestep two you know great moves and then you can also play at this long range with Feng. Uh, the reason for that is he has a couple moves that you can actually whiff relatively safely so from this range if you do forward forward and hold back forward four and then just hold back or down back it's pretty difficult for the opponent to whiff punish it um, that also includes down back one down back one is kind of hard to whiff punish because if you hold back you go into back tempo stance and that has an auto block in it so that's another move that you can just do from far away to tell the guy like look what's the hold up you know let's go and another move is down back four this low sweep is really weird one of the better ones in the game it looks like it doesn't high crush at all in the beginning if let me let me see if i can pause it he actually even goes higher than he was when he started the animation but it high crushes the whole time instantly so it's a great high crush it tracks it's a homing move now and on whiff it's really fucking hard to punish i mean the guy has to just know you're gonna do it and punish perfectly so that's another move that you can use out of range and just like you know be a bitch you could just be a total dick and just turtle and wait and use these moves to make it look like you're doing stuff but you're not doing anything and eventually they're just gonna come in and get their shit pushed in so the moral of the story is Feng he can be played at any range and luckily he doesn't have any difficult execution so he can be played by any level of a player the only problem is that this character doesn't have the types of standalone cheap ass moves that some characters have like this character has a shitload of good moves tons but nothing really great where you're just fearful of it 
Now the thing is, that seems like kind of weird, but it ends up being actually pretty good. Because it's kind of like one of those things where this character goes under the radar. Everyone knows he's really good in this game, but, you know, nobody really knows why. Nobody really understands what the deal is. And my opinion is, the reason he's so good in this game is because he has so many moves that are good, but he doesn't have any moves that are great, so your opponent doesn't really even know what to expect. There are just a million weird ass, you know, down forward three, down, down three, down back three. There are so many good moves that are just good, but not like over the top to where people are going to start noticing them, like lightning screw or, you know, I don't know. There's just a shitload of fucking moves in the game, you know, electrics or whatever, uh, arc blast for Lars or any one of those characters that like ivory cutter, reverse ivory cutter. These are like standalone moves that you can remember. But Fang, he's just got a bunch of decent stuff, decent stuff. And I think that's what makes him really good in the hands of a player who understands all the entire move list. If you have a player who's just like, oh, I'm going to play Fang, and you know, I know that shoulder's good, I know I can whiff punish with some shit, and I know a few, you know, I know a few punishers, whatever. Yeah, you can get kind of far, but the key to using this character is using everything, using all the tools together, and not, that's how you become unpredictable with him. And if you play that way, I mean, it's kind of unanimous. This is one of the best uh, characters in the game. I think any top player in the world has him at least lifts, listed as top 15. And I think the only reason he's not on the level of like Lars and Leo is because as as just a character that's good with any partner is because he doesn't have the wall damage that those characters have. I mean, he has open ground damage that's super good. I got him with Dragon off right now. This easy combo. This isn't even a combo. Super easy. 110 open ground. I mean, that's really good. And you can go higher than that, too, if you want to do, like, you know, there's, there's, I don't remember what the combo is, but you get 115 off of that shit if you, if you want. So, his damage is high in open ground. He's got great moves overall. He's got good lows. He's got lots of good shit, and he goes well with every character, but the only thing that's fucked up about this character is at the wall, which I'll show you later, but at the wall, he has just weak damage, and Lars and Leo and Mishimas and all the other cheap ass characters in the game, they have just exceptionally good wall damage. So, I think that's what keeps him out of being one of the best. I already need water, man. My voice is fucked up. So, that's the 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 type of character he is. You can. Any level of player can use him. His execution is not that difficult, and he's good overall. The only problem is that, you know, you got to learn him thoroughly. So, let's start with his stances. First of all, he has a crouch dash. It's actually a roll dash. A roll dash in Tekken is uh, a crouch dash like Paul's or Dragon Off's or any one of the crouch dashes that's a quarter circle forward motion. And the reason it's called a roll dash is because it ends standing as opposed to crouching. Now, you can end this crouch dash in crouch if you hold down forward. Now, this is really important for doing crouch dash while standing one. That is one of the most important tools with this character. While standing one is a 14 frame while standing move, and it, can't, it has an extension one to one. While standing one two is a natural combo. One to one is not a natural combo. They can block that. Uh, and it is unsafe. I think it's minus 10 or 11. But that's not the point. The point is crouch dash while standing one is one of your best ways to get in and, you know, just use a safe poke, get in, and if they block it, you can sidewalk, you can fucking do whatever you want. It's a great way to get in. The crouch dash itself has other moves out of it, and I'll go over those right now. This low, crouch dash one, is actually a shoulder, so it cannot be low parried. And I think it's minus 13 or maybe even 14 on block. So some of those shithead characters like Bruce or Kazuya or uh, I forget who else can launch you if they block this. But again, it, it's unseeable, especially if you mix it up with Crouch Dash 2. Crouch Dash 2 is, before I move on from Crouch Dash 1, on counter hit, this stupid move gives you a full combo now. You dash in, hit 1 plus 4, and then down back 1 plus 2, and you get a whole combo off of this move on counter hit. Uh, that's an addition in, ta in uh, Tag 2. Um, also, on top of that, this move is like plus 3 or something on hit, but it leaves you out of position. As you can see, you're a little far. So doing anything other than maybe a down back 
uh, three is a little bit risky. So when you hit th with this move, just accept that you got 33 points and you're good to go. Just back up and start being a bitch from over here. Um, crouch dash two is a mid. Uh, I think it's a class one launcher, but you know it's it's good just to mix up. I think it's good just to mix up Crouch Dash 1. Otherwise, or also to punish a raw tag, it's decent. But otherwise, I mean, it's not that great of a move. It's got a decent hitbox. I should have fucking unplugged my shit. Now people are going to distract the hell out of me. Anyway. Alright. So, what was I saying? Crouch Dash 2. Crouch Dash 2, you know, it's a decent launcher. It has a low hitbox. So, some characters who have, like, relax and shit, they'll struggle getting under it. Because it comes from below. Um, and it's decent. You got a combo, but I mean there isn't much to talk about it. It's minus 14 on block So you can get launched and um, You know it, it depends it depends on when you're gonna use it uh, Crouch dash 3 is the same as his wall standing 3. It just comes out naturally as crouch dash 3. This move is fucking fantastic um, I'll get into it in a minute when I talk about wall standing punishers, but that's crouch dash 3 uh, and then Crouch Dash 4 is just, you know, while standing 4. Again, nothing special about that. And then I... Oh yeah, Crouch Dash 1 plus 2. Crouch Dash 1 plus 2 is an extremely useful move. Because it's a bound move. It's a headbutt, so they can't counter it. It's like plus 5 on block. And it's like plus 6 or 7 on hit. So for a wall game, this is a great move. For fucking anything, it's a great move. I mean, just do it. If you feel like you have enough time to get it out do it it's a great move on counter hit you get a free stomp um which kind of got fucked up by tag crash i think they oh actually this one's a real stomp some of these stomps that feng gets you can tag crash out of them but this one's legit it's like an actual combo so even if they tag crash they can't get out and that's a ton of damage so that's pretty good and also off of crouch dash if you hit three plus four you go into forward kempo or parting clouds or whatever the hell it's called um so that's crouch dash three plus four and I will talk about this stance next. This stance has an auto parry in it. He's waving his hands around. That This stance has an auto parry in it. Let's see if I can show you guys how it works. This might be a pain in the ass, but I'll try it. Let's see. Is he going to do this shit? All right. Hold on. There we go. And then you get a knockdown for wake-ups. It'll parry two... It'll pe it needs to parry two punches or kicks of in any order, and they have to be mid or high. And when that happens, he does that automatic uh, attack afterwards, which kind of looks like that. And um, the thing is that if it parries the two attacks, it's going to come out with that attack. But the opponent, depending on what limbs, what types of moves got parried, they have the ability to block after that. So it's kind of like a just frame block. Don't worry about it. No one's ever going to do it. And if they do do it, who gives a fuck? You know, so forward tempo, it can parry two attacks, which can be really uh, uh, aggravating for your opponent because they think for sure they're going to hit you with these two attacks, and boom, some weird shit comes out. You know what I mean? So, forward tempo one, I think, is a total piece of shit move. Useless. This move is useless. It's slow and mid and unsafe. I think it's minus 14. I think you might be able to get a full combo of it, but it's really difficult and it sucks. So, don't ever use this shit. It's garbage. And I'm not the kind of guy that just discounts moves. I usually am open-minded about moves, and I try to find a place for every move in the game. But some moves are just shitty. I mean, there's no nothing you could do about it. Instead of using this for a mid, you gotta use forward tempo 2. This move is just super cheap. The reason is, so the, the stance itself will cover, um, you know, 2 attacks two limbs right afterwards most people are ducking because of forward tempo four this makes forward tempo two just super exceptionally good now the reason i think it's really good is because on block it has pushback and if the opponent tries from like if you hit them with shallow at shallow range if they try to one two you can easily high crush it even though this this uh, mid launcher is minus I think 12 or 11 they can't punish it because of range only like Bob or characters with long limbs limbs can punish this so as soon as you get this blocked shallow hit you can duck and then while standing three or you can do just like if you want to be ballsy you could do that shit anything that high crushes will work internet says it's minus 13 either way the point is shallow hit 
you can duck under jabs because they don't reach and it's a total mind fuck because this is one of those things you know how like uh you're playing in a tournament and you do something to your opponent where oh they, they block it and they know this shit is minus 13 here comes my punish and then you do something fucked up like you duck under their punish and while standing or whatever you know that's the kind of thing that just will fuck someone up they will just be like what is this bullshit you know, fuck this game. And then when that happens, that's when you're just on them. You're doing crazy setups and stuff, and the round's over. You know what I mean? So this type of stuff, Fang has a lot of stuff like this, where if you know and they don't know, you can really mind fuck them in two out of three. It's super good. So uh, that move, exceptionally good. Let me show you a quick combo off of it, just so you guys can get an idea. You can do some hard combos, or you could just keep it simple. You don't even have to turn them around to get good damage. Um, I forgot what the good combo was. I think it was... Uh, yeah, I think you can tag buffer this for good good damage. Anyway, you get what I'm trying to say. So it's tag bufferable. It's a legit launcher, full damage. It's good. Anyway, so uh, forward tempo 4. This low is really good damage unseeable on, uh, other than the stance so it's basically a 50 50 between this mid and this low um it's a great low i think it's minus 13 or something it's or maybe 12 i don't remember but the point is that you don't need to worry about how unsafe it is because it should always be uh it should always connect um it's just like the other concept i was talking about it, you have a 50 50 here so if it's blocked it's your bad you guessed wrong and that's that's your bad and if your opponent is just guest ducking that means you should be kicking the shit out of them for free you know anyway uh, forward tempo 3 is a bound move that uh, is useless for that purpose but it gives frame advantage on um, on block and it this is a good example I was gonna give you so this move gives a free um, stomp on hit but since it's not a true combo the opponent has time to tag crash so if they do tag crash and whoops wrong button if they do tag crash you can do something like up back one to make the i mean obviously they're going to tag crash especially if you're going to kill them so you hit them with this and they're going to tag crash to avoid that stomp no matter what they're going to do it so when you hit them with this and they're almost dead do an up back one and you get a free launcher on them for that so boom you, or you could do back tempo but it's a little bit harder but up back one and boom free launcher super super good anyway so um that's forward tempo stance this i just realized is going to take fucking forever anyway let's talk about back tempo stance so back tempo is really uh good for uh, poke wars when you're in their face and you guys are just scrapping and you neither one of you knows what the person's gonna do next it could be a down forward one it could be a sidewalk whatever this move is good for that because this stance has an auto block in it during the during this animation and it has great moves coming out of it this low actually high crushes almost immediately so and it's plus like three on hit and it's unseeable it also has some tracking so it's solid. It's a solid low. Good damage too. Um, let me get some water before I tell you about the transitions. So I forgot to mention that forward tempo can transition into back tempo by holding back. So this is what forward tempo looks like. Forward tempo, if you hold back, transitions into the back tempo stance, which is that. So, you can do forward tempo, hold back, and then get those moves out of that. Anyway. Oh, yeah, I forgot to turn tag crash off. Oh. Okay. So, back tempo 2 is good for if they're just going to whiff something like a jab or 1 2 or whatever, you could just do this shit and you get a free shoulder afterwards. Which is not hard to do at all there you go and good damage it's a good move if you think that you're gonna do your back tempo and they're going to attack with just a quick move that recovers very quickly this is the one you should use uh, if they do a slower move however uh, you should definitely use back tempo 3 because it's a full launcher and I think it's only minus 12 on block which is legit 
and the thing is that you can also even though this this launcher is not tag bufferable itself you can tag out of the combo by doing forward three four so it's a full full launcher and you should definitely use it when the opponent does something retarded and you back sway out of it um let's see this launcher is good and what else do we have oh yeah back tempo four is useful sometimes you kind of got to hail mary it because there isn't really much of a way to set up such an obscure move you can also do this spring afterwards um it's it's all right but it's not really that useful unless the wall's nearby um so that's that um also ford tempo has this string ford tempo one i think it's one plus two one two it's it's hit confirmable but basically it's shitty i mean it's a it's a natural combo the last hits high but if you're gonna forward tempo and they're gonna duck i mean you might as well just have some balls into a launcher uh otherwise it's it's really no bueno it doesn't do anything and you know who gives a shit so that's the forward tempo and back tempo before i move on from back tempo i want to say you can transition from back into forward back into back so back three plus four and then hit forward and then hit back again so you're cycling through stances but if you go forward you can only go back you can not go back into forward after that so that's how you transition between the stances um let me see oh yeah back turned the most fucking important stance of all this shit is super cheap when you turn back turn the way you do it is back three a tilde four so you kind of slide it one frame shift or whatever it is called so back three, a tilde four. When you turn around and you're back turned, just like every other character in the game, you can't move. As soon as you push a button, you can't move. I mean, there are some characters like Lei and like, I think Xiao Yu and Raven and shit, they can walk around back turn. But Feng can't do that. So basically, when you run in their face and turn back turned, either you're gonna do something or you're just gonna turn back around and not do anything. Now, from back turn, he's got a ton of good ass shit. This dance has improved a shitload since Tekken 6. It's really, really good. Um, let's start with back turn 1. This is a 12 frame move, and it has great range, as you can see. And on hit, it's plus 14. So that means you get a free shoulder on hit. That is super fucking cheap, especially by the wall. All you gotta do is just fucking do this move. And it's safe on block, too. You don't even need to be good. In Tekken 6, you had to counter hit confirm this. Because you needed a counter hit for it to give you a free uh, free shoulder. But now, all you gotta do is just regular hit confirm it. It's such an obvious animation, too. Because the opponent grabs their face like that. It's, like, really clear. Easy to hit confirm. Really cheap. Um, back turn 2-2. Two, two, and back turn 2 is very important. Because from back turn... Basically, Feng's highs and lows are much more dangerous than his mids. So back turn 2 is extremely important in this stance because it's an unseeable mid. Now, just the 2 itself leaves you in back turn, and it's plus 5 on hit, I think. I think it's plus 5 on hit. So that allows you to do another back turn mix-up on hit. On block, because there's a second hit, back turn 2-2, two, two, which is a bound move also. But because there is a second hit, the opponent will hesitate because you can delay that hit like I just did right there so back turn 2 is gonna cause hesitation no matter what block or hit uh, on hit though like I said it's it's actual uh, frame advantage now this is a natural combo and I think you can hit confirm it yeah you can hit confirm it but the thing is that it on block this is minus 13 and it leaves the opponent in crouch so again bruce kazuya or any of those other asshole characters are going to launch you for that so you have to be careful with the second hit but the f the first hit alone is safe pretty safe i mean it tracks to that side i think to fang's left it tracks to his left and you know it's a decent move um another thing i wanted to talk about is if it hits the opponent is in that position and you can do something like uh stomp if they don't get up but what I like to do is if you do a fish hook right there, which is back four, and they try to move at all, even back roll, um, they're going to flip like that. And when you get them to flip like that, you get a free shoulder like that. That gives you a free shoulder. You can also, if you hit them with this and then do a fish hook, you can also do down four, one plus two like that. If the wall's close, you can wall carry, dash in, and do that shit. So it does work that way. It's decent now uh let's see where was i oh back turn 
before we move on from this move, I wanted to just let you guys know that the second hit on counter hit now is a launcher. So you can do a full combo if the second hit counter hits, which is what makes the delay kind of useful. But again, minus 13 on block, so you have to be careful. Uh, back turn 1 plus 2. This is your most important mid from back turn. It's like minus 1 or 2, but but maybe minus four i forgot but you're in back turn afterwards and it's safe so when it hits they get crumpled like that and there's a few setups you can do like for example if one, back turn one plus two hits and you do back turn three that's not a combo they can tech roll that but if you set them to tech roll which i will do right now and you do back turn one plus two and do the three and they tech they can't interrupt any uh 14 frame move or faster so let's say I do that and they try to attack because I whiffed such a big looking move. You know, that shit looks like a huge whiff. They're tech rolling. They're going to try to attack. So you do that. You do this. They tech rolled and you get a counter hit back one. No matter what they do, they're going to eat that counter hit back one unless they're high crushing. So back turn one plus two is really good for that reason. Also, what I like to do is if I hit with back turn one plus two, I'll just dash in and go back turn again. It's like perfect uh spacing and timing for you to be able to do another uh another setup and doing this uh, i don't know if uh, i think let's see someone in the chat just uh, i just glanced over and they asked about what if they back roll i'm pretty sure back turn three will beat back roll as well but let's try yeah oh maybe not Let's see what happens if you dash in. Oh, you're still good. So if if you uh, if they back roll, you could just dash in for uh, back turn mix ups. I usually go for the back turn mix ups more than anything. But if you want to get kind of sneaky, you could do that setup I talked about. Also, this move, like I said, it's safe. So if it's ever blocked, you definitely should hold down back to recover and turn around. Anytime you're in back turn, down back is the safest way to turn around because not only are you instantly high crushing, but you're also creating space. That's really important to remember. So any one of the moves that you have that ends in back turn like this or this or forward four or whatever, you want to use down back or even sidestep two, you want to use down back to turn around if it's blocked. So let me think, where was I? All right, back turn three. I talked about that. The good thing about this move is that it is uh, it tracks pretty well. So you should you should consider using it when you feel like there's going to be some hesitation, or if you feel like there's a possibility that your opponent is while they're on the ground they're going to raw tag because this move is uh, has really good range and it's active for a while, so it covers options. It's like a good Okazemi tool that will also cover a raw tag. So uh, that's back turn three, and then you have back turn four, which is though it's a generic high kick, it's extremely important because um, it tracks to one side and it's good damage, and you have to use it. I mean, there are situations where if you, like, let's say you get this blocked, right? You're only at a small negative disadvantage, and since back turn four is a 10 frame move, you can do this on block, and if the opponent does anything slower than maybe like a 10 or 12 frame move you're going to counter hit and it's good damage so uh i think it's very important to remember this move uh also you have back turn low kick um this again is a very generic move but it's extremely important and i'll tell you why later when we get into some of the punishers but you also have back turn down three now back turn down three is pretty much the most dangerous move you have from back turn it it has the longest uh like danger range it has the highest damage because you get a full combo off of it and i mean it's just a great move the only problem is it's launch punishable and now in t6 it staggers on block so uh what you can do is you can do the classic cheap shit where you duck in back turn and then they duck in back turn assuming that you did a sweep and then you just do the sweep after they stand that's a you know it's a classic divinicus they've been doing it forever um basically you run in their face turn back turn duck and to the opponent that looks like the most dangerous move from back turn which is this but you didn't do it and then they stand up and since it's so fast like i said earlier it's about 20 frames so uh the average person will not be able to see it especially from crouch because you're already crouching so basically it's an ex extremely cheap move you should be very cautious when you're using it so that they're not ducking because as i said earlier 
all of the um, all of the moves from back turn um, the most dangerous ones are high and low and so more often than not when you turn back turn your opponent's gonna want to crouch so just condition them with mids and shit and then eventually you're gonna be able to use the lows and poke them um, this move I, I, I re uh oh screensaver there we go yeah I mean it's really good you just have to be careful when you use it um, let's see what else am I missing oh really important back turn one plus four or two plus three is a command back turn one plus two grab and most people are gonna break one plus two from back turn because this grab not only does it do 50 points damage but it gives extremely good wake ups I mean really cheap wake ups you can do if they side roll down four three is gonna connect and if they just get up straight you know fish hook is a great option too so I mean there are so many options off of this throw the wake ups here are really cheap lots of damage and you get you can get a free shoulder off of that um so so basically since that throw is so good and so dangerous most opponents are going to try to break one plus two and since from back turned all the throws look the same let me give you guys a visual aid of that that's a one throw that's a two throw and that's a one plus two throw all of them look like one plus two so they're going to be breaking the one plus two which means from back turned you have extremely dangerous one and two grabs because i mean basically this is the reason the reason why people duck so much when you're in back turn because your grabs are super fucking dangerous you have a knockdown low that's going to give a full combo and you don't have any mids that are going to give a full combo you got this shit that's just going to give more okazemi and you got this shit which is just going to give okazemi so basically back turned they're going to duck so you got to keep them standing by doing fucking mids all day long extremely important you can also get really tricky with back turn stance like you could go back turn turn back around with down forward and do something like wall standing one or you can even do wall standing three you know because you're causing hesitation basically feng screams and he turns around and your opponent's like fuck what do i do so that's when you just do anything you could do anything you want and just get creative and be careful watch what your opponent's doing while you uh turn around see what they do give them time you don't have to act right away the thing is a lot of time i see feng players and they do this stance and immediately they do a move just like right away and that is really good but i mean you don't necessarily have to do that because when you turn around your opponent is shitting themselves they have you have a a window of hesitation that is just really useful so Basically, you don't have to attack right away. Just take your time, watch what your opponent's doing, and attack appropriately to what they're doing. Because this stance is super, sh super cheap. Alright, so I think that covers all the stances. This video is going to take for fucking ever. Alright. Uh, moving on to Punishers. For 10 frames, he has 1-3. Uh, 1-3 one three. One three is like plus 5 on hit. The good thing about this stance is that now that when the second hit counter hits, I think you get a uh, combo, but it has to be up close. Nah, I couldn't have him crouch. In T6, um, you did not get a combo if the second hit counter hit, but now you get down for 1 plus 2 if you're in close, if you're in all the way. Um, it's a good move. The, the reason why 1-3 uh, is good actually in pokes is because the timing of it is different than a 1-2. So the opponent will see the one and let's say they're sidewalking, they'll get counter hit by the three a lot more often than they would. Like if, if they anticipate, let's say you're playing a Lars, right? And Lars does down forward one and then he does a sidestep to do an arc blast. If he does that exact setup against one, two, you are up in the air. That's it. 50% is gone. But if he does down forward one and you do one, three, he's going to get counter hit by the one, three, and you're going to be hitting him. You're going to be getting wake ups on him. So basically, uh, you should definitely use this move in cases where, when you're up close in a poke war and you're not sure what they're going to do, but you feel like they might try to bait you into attacking for a sidestep with Punisher. Uh, that's why this is good. It's also good as a Punisher. I mean, 1-3, um, you know, 31 damage, plus 5, pretty decent. Um, he also has 1-2-2. Two, two. Uh, I, I think 1-2-2 two, two is really good not only because it's 34 damage but uh you can end in back turn by holding back and i think uh, and it's hit confirmable hit confirmable is extremely important now if you hit with this move 
I think you should always go into back turn because the options from that position are much better than front turn. If you stay front frontwards, I think you're only at plus one or something. It's not a lot of frame advantage. But if you turn back turn, you're approximately, I think, plus two to four. I forget, but it's good enough to where if you hit with this, you they cannot interrupt a back turn down four unless they hop kick it. So basically, you have a 10 frame punish that turns you around and the first few times they're going to get hit by that because they're going to realize they can't even sidewalk. But um, after that, you're creating a 50 50 and that's really good off of a 10 frame punish. You're getting, you know, any one of your back turn mids versus uh, this back turn low, which is uninterruptible. And then, you know, you can get creative with whatever the fuck you want. Oh, fuck. Okay. So, uh, one to two, very good. You can hit confirm it, as I said. Another weird thing about Fang, it kind of doesn't do anything, but you can delay his one two. I don't think any other character can do that. I don't know if you guys can tell, but that's one two right away, and you can delay it. I don't know what it does. I don't know why you could do it, but you could delay his one two. Anyway, one two two on block is unsafe, so make sure you hit confirm it. It's really easy to hit confirm. Just do one two, and then if it hits, just two again. Very simple. Um, let's see. Another 10th frame punish he has is 2-4. Now, 2-4 is really good for a 10th frame punish now because he can cancel the two, the third hit, which is 2-4-1. He can cancel that into back turn. This shit is super cheap. I mean, people are just, like, tearing their hair out over this stupid move. The reason is because everyone sees this thing and wants to attack because you can delay the third hit. Uh, the, what is it? 2-4-1. 241 you can delay the third hit and it's only like minus 10 or 11, I'm sorry 11 or 12 on block that third hit so the opponent doesn't think you're going to do that third hit more often than not they think you're just going to do a back turn mix up which is so effective as we've been talking about basically if you do the third hit and they get counter hit they're going to be really pissed really pissed and they roll like that so you get a free if you roll if you run after them right away and they don't do the quick recover off of the back roll thing you get a free uh, running stomp thing you know when you run from far away and they're on the ground you step on them like a piece of shit so then um so that is the reason why i forget what fucking move i was talking about. oh yeah this one that move is really dangerous so once you get them to respect you from uh from that thing once they start to respect you you can then do the back turn mix-ups and it is so cheap i mean people get so pissed because the move itself cause it gives you frame advantage into back turn but it also causes hesitation and hesitation is the best kind of frame advantage because it doesn't even matter you can't put mathematical equations to hesitation i mean if you if you put your opponent in a situation where they hesitate i mean dude it's too fucking good it's too good uh and that's because there's no way for them to quantify the hesitation there's no way for them to get out of it other than to do something really stupid i mean like a panic move they have to panic move and they do sometimes don't get me wrong i mean this strategy is not immune to i'm just gonna fucking hop kick right here i don't want to deal with it yeah i agree it's uh, it, it's possible that you will get randoms with this but if they're doing random hop kicks and shit, you know, you can punish them anyway. You know, just be a man and use use the third hit correctly in order to create that hesitation and open up all kinds of bullshit. I mean, throws? That is so cheap. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. So, those are the 10 frame punishers. 1-3, uh, one, 1-2-2, one, two, two, and 1-4 into the mix-ups. Those are all exceptionally good for their own purposes. I can't say that only one of them is really like uh, useful. I can't, I can't say that. Now, uh, for 11 frames, he has this stupid shit. Oh yeah, for 10 frames, you can also do back one. Now, it's not a good punisher, but it is plus five on hit. So, I mean, it, that one I wouldn't use as a 10 frame punisher. It's an interrupt move, and I'll talk about it later. Um, for 11 frames, he has standing four. Again, useless. It has about the same range as a jab. And it's a piece of shit. So it's not really that good. Um, on counter hit, you do get a small uh, combo like that. But again, there isn't much point to that when you can just use counter hit back one and get a shitload of damage with a free shoulder, which is not difficult to do at all. Free shoulder. 
Uh, 56 damage is a shitload, and it's uh, one frame faster than standing four, and it's plus five on hit, and it's good. So basically, standing four, it's usable, but not really that useful. I mean, look at the pathetic range. I'm kicking this guy in the hand. He doesn't even give a shit. Look at that. Abs absurd. Anyway, so 12 frame, again, you have to pretty much use the 10 frame. Uh, all of the 10 frame stuff is pretty decent. I mean, it's not going to be fucking shit up like the way Lars is with his 12 frame, but, you know, it's decent. You know, 12 frame, you got to go with all that one, one, two, two, and all that stuff. But 13 frames is when you start farting in people's dinner. Back 1 plus 2 is buffed in this game the damage on it is 40 now i mean it's extremely useful off of all kinds of combos if you end your combos with it it's really fucking good 13 frames i mean look at the range on it now you may be thinking oh i should use a uh, shoulder to punish hop kicks because hop kicks are now universally minus 13 but the problem i've found and the reason you'll see that a lot of uh, high level fang players do not use shoulder consistently to punish hop kick is because some hop kicks uh king i think armor king lay bruce a few others they actually can recover at minus 12 from shallow hit like if you if it gets blocked at the tip and you do a shoulder it's only going to be minus 12 and shoulder as you guys know is launch punishable as fuck so you do not want to fuck that up just do it when it's guaranteed or when you're at this range like i said and the opponent does something stupid just they give you a whiff boom just give them a fucking shoulder no problem and it's really good for catching limbs too like if the opponent let's say uh i'm playing against this fang player right here right and he does something like forward forward two now forward forward two is kind of a difficult move to punish sometimes because of the way he moves back a little bit so, if he does 4-4-2, I mean, shoulder just gets right up in his ass. It's a great move for that. It's, it just has a very good vertical hitbox, good whiff punisher, tons of damage. I mean, I can't stress enough how important it is for you to just familiarize yourself with this shoulder if you're trying to play this character. I mean, know the range, know the uh, speed so that you can whiff punish with it perfectly. I mean, it's really important. This is a key move for this character. And it's his 13 frame punisher. Um, for 14 frames, let's see, what does he have that's 14 frames? I think 14 frames is still this shit. Oh, let me see. Yeah, I think shoulder. I mean, he doesn't have anything good for 14 while, while he's in the standing position. Uh, and then 15, of course, you have a hop kick. Now, the problem with this piece of shit hop kick is, as you can see, it has terrible range. Now, this wouldn't be a big issue unless it, his hop kick wasn't his primary 15 frame launcher. So he does have a 15 frame launcher, but because his hop kick has short range, there are some moves that if you block, you cannot punish with a hop kick. One of those moves is reverse ivory cutter for uh, Nina. Nina's back one plus four reverse ivory cutter. It has enough push block to if you do a hop kick, she's going to launch you and it's fucking bullshit. So for that reason, uh, you have to keep in mind down back one, two. Down back one two, I believe, let me double check this, is 16 frames. And yeah, it's 16 frames. Um, that's why you need it. Down back one two can punish things like reverse ivory cutter, can punish things like uh, laws while standing two, I believe. Uh, some things that, you know, hop kick, even though it's faster, it won't reach. You have to punish with down back one two. Uh, and it's not a launcher, which is fucked up. You can also use a shoulder, same damage, but shoulder doesn't even reach sometimes. You sometimes have to use down back one too, because it has a longer range than it looks. That's a great, it's a great move overall. Um, let me go over, let me see, what else did I miss? Uh, I'll talk about down back one a little bit. So down back one is an uh, interesting move. It high crushes, but not instantly, and you can transition into forward tempo or back tempo with this move. Um, it's good. You can use it uh, from far away because it's difficult to whiff punish if you hold back because the back tempo has a, it has a, uh, what do you call it? A fucking auto block in it. So it's pretty decent, useful, I'd say. Uh, you can also use it to, uh, in wall setups, which I'll, I'll show you later. And down back one, two is a natural combo. I, as I said, it goes under highs. It gives you plus frames on hit. And it's only like minus, I think, 10 or 10 to 12 on block. But it might be more. It might be 14. Don't, don't quote me. I forgot about that. But it doesn't matter because it's fucking good. And it's hit confirmable. And don't fuck it up. It's hit confirmable. Um, 
Let's see. What else is important about this shit? It's good at the wall. Like I said, I'd, uh, I'll tell you later. Um, the next Punisher he's got is Forward 4. Now, Forward 4 is 18 frames, and it's not really a Punisher. But, again, in cases like Laws While Standing 2, you have to use Forward 4. Because, I mean, if you, if you look at the scenario, right? Law is in your face, and he's doing those bullshit crouch mix-ups, right? And he does a wall standing two. If that wall standing two had hit you, you would you should be getting. I mean, you would be in the air. He's gonna get a full combo. So when you block it, you want to get a full combo too. So for that reason, I suggest punishing wall standing two with law or things of that sort with uh, forward four. You get a full combo. Let me see. Oh yeah, the most damage you could get is forward four back up to. Let's see if I could do it. Nope, fucked it up. That's the full damage. 94 damage. It's really good. And this this is a super cheap move. So I'm going to talk about this shit now. As I said earlier, you can whiff this move pretty much for free. No problem. I mean, it's like the cheapest shit. Now, normal hit launcher, it tracks to one side. I think it tracks to my right. So Feng's right. Uh, one player, Feng's right. Um... It is a normal launcher, super cheap. Uh, it's high though, but even if it uh, whiffs and is blocked, it's very difficult for people to punish it because of the way you can hold down back to turn around. Uh, so extremely good punisher. Also, I have to mention forward three four and forward three. I'm sorry, forward four three and forward four four are really really good extensions. So because this is so good and it's so safe. You can do forward three. Let me put the dumbass on block so you guys can get a good visual aid of this. So basically, as soon as they start blocking this, they're going to start getting pissed. And they're going to start chasing you down to catch you at, with at least a mix-up on block. And that's when you start doing this shit and they start getting fucking furious. Because on hit... Oh, he's still blocking. On hit... If that part hits, you get a free stomp. And it's a real free stomp. It's not one of those bullshit tag crashable ones. So that's really good. Good damage. And I'll do that from like way out here sometimes. Like I'll just be doing forward four. And they're just like, man, fuck this guy. I'm not going to come in. And eventually they're like, you know what? I'm going in. I don't even care. And that's when you whiff the forward four and do the three. And man, they are pissed. The, the, the usefulness of forward four four is more limited. The way I use it is I use that as like an option select when I fuck up a combo because some combos if you're at an angle the forward four won't work and what you can do is you could do the the forward four and you'll know like after you play Feng for a while you'll be like uh oh this might not work if it doesn't work you can just do forward four four and they'll tech and that shit will hit them very frequently if you basically anytime you fuck up the forward four in a combo you can try forward four four and they'll tech roll I don't know why he's back rolling I said him to that earlier let's try that again so if you fuck the timing of that up you can do forward four four man I think I need a cigarette forward four four and then you know they're gonna have to block it uh, it is launch punishable but it does not stagger I don't think and it doesn't go punished very often because of the uselessness of it basically this is one of those things earlier if you heard what I said in the beginning of the tutorial I mentioned that the reason Fang is so good is because he's got a lot of moves that are not that good but they are usable this is one of those moves where this move is not good forward 4-4 four, four, but it's usable because after you know not seeing it for a long time your opponents bound to get hit by it and if it hits you get a full combo so very important to remember that now uh, where were we? Forward 4, I went over all that shit. Um, the next Punisher I think I should mention is Forward 3-4. This is the move that ties the whole fucking room together. Um, forward 3-4 is super good. It has extremely good range. It's a natural combo. Uh, it's great for uh, beating raw tags because the first hit into the second hit, the first hit has fantastic range. Look at this bullshit. Are you guys watching how far the range is? And you're going to shit your pants. On hit, I think it's like plus 7 or something. 
it's just I don't know how much frame advantage maybe plus five but forward three into down back three is really good I think it's uninterruptible and it tracked forward three has great tracking too from tip range it's just an excellent move to just throw out there now unfortunately you cannot hit him from forward 3-4. You just have to do it. And the move itself is minus 16 to 15, well, depending on range. So, And it's since it's two hits, even the scrubbiest opponent is going to launch punish you for blocking this. Unless you train them. I'm going to tell you guys a tip. Okay, this, does, this isn't going to work online. But uh, I don't know if you guys can he hear my controller. But when I play against an offline opponent and they are sitting next to me, every time I do forward 3, every time. I do forward 3-3. Three, three. I do really loud. Every time. Forward 3-3. Three, three. Forward 3-3. Three, three. And the reason is because I know those fucking listening assholes are listening to my button so that when I do forward 3-4, four, they'll punish it. So, basically, if you do forward 3-3 three, three, and you just fucking make them listen to that two hit, then eventually when you're in this position and they do a whiff but you're not 100%, Four, three, four, and boom. They're just going to be like, man, what the fuck? They won't punish it. Even if it gets blocked, sometimes it won't go punished because you train them with that loud ass four, three, three. Uh, I mean, I haven't really talked about that too much, and it doesn't really have too much to do with Fang, but um, I pretty much every two hit string in the game, or any string at all, I use that button technique like four two this is a string that fang has four two one two is a counter hit combo and what i do is i just do four two two and they think the second hit's coming and it gives me that hesitation i was talking about you want hesitation that's what you want in my opinion hesitation is more valuable than frame advantage hesitation advantage h stun you know what I'm saying? It's really good. So you can create that with these strings. It's really important. Forward 2, it's good shit. Um, let me see. I'll get back to that later, though. Uh, forward 3 is what I was talking about. Forward 3, 4 is a fucking cheap-ass move, and I'll tell you why right now. So we just went over how it has super long range. Forward 3 by itself is really fucking cheap. If they make a huge error, forward 3, 4 is an extremely high damage. I'm doing the easy combo right now. Look at the damage on this bullshit. 110 easy combo damage. Let me see if I can do a hard combo for you guys. All right, let's see if I can get this done. I fucked it up, but you can do a lot of damage with that. Basically, uh, easy combo is 110 points, and hard combo is like 116 to 120. Open ground. So. If you can understand the emphasis in my voice right now, you can see that 434 is tying the whole fucking room together. This move is it. This is the move. Highest damage launcher, uh, covers tons of ground. 43 by itself is fantastic. You gotta hit the button two times so your opponent is like, man, you know, fuck this guy. And it's great. The last thing I wanna talk about with this move is if you can use it in Okazemi. Now, uh, let me think of a scenario where it's really good. I'm just going to give you guys an example. Uh, let me set him to quick back roll. And if I pick him up for a back roll, you, get, you still get a combo off of it. Because you get a jab off of it now. That's new in Tekken Tag 2. So, I mean, in the, in the case that I showed you earlier where you punish a tag crash with up back 1 into forward 3-4. If you time the forward 3-4 incorrectly, you're going to hit an airborne opponent. And even if you hit an airborne opponent, I don't even give a shit whatever full combo anyway another cheap thing about 434 is that you can tag buffer with it so even off of a hop kick you can fucking uh, get a tag combo it's really cheap i mean 434 just ties the whole fucking room together uh any one of his launchers 434 and then you get a jab afterwards uh it's kind of strict against smaller characters like fang but it does work um 434 super cheap super good uh high damage and everything so yeah, you can use it in wake-ups, uh, and you do get a full combo because it, that's a new thing in Tekken Tag 2. Um, and I think that's all his regular standing punishers. So for wall standing punishers, for 10 frames, he has a down jab, of course, which is who gives a fuck. For 11 frames, he has wall standing 4, which is just a piece of shit. It's one of the worst wall standing 4s. Not only is, does it not do high damage like, you know, uh, King and Paul, but it also has just the worst range. It doesn't have the ability to pick up too well off the ground. Uh, it's a piece of shit. But 
you have to use it. Sometimes you have to use it. It's just essential. Uh, while studying four, that's what he's got. While, uh, for uh, 11 frames. For 12 frames, he doesn't have anything. For 13 frames, he doesn't have anything, I don't think. And for 14 frames, this is new in Tag 2. While standing 1-2 is a 14 frame Punisher. It also covers a lot of ground. Now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the most important ways to get in with Fang, other than forward three and down back three, and doing like a whiff punish, is crouch dash while standing one. That is so important. The way you do it is crouch dash, but then hold down forward, and just as you enter crouch at the end of the crouch dash, do while standing one. That is so good. This shit is fucked up. Now, if they're moving around at this range, like they're walking and shit, you can do sides, uh, crouch dash while standing one, two, and that has some added tracking so while standing one will track to your left and while standing two will track to your right now th i mean it's not completely a homing move but there is some tracking to it so if they're walking around left and right and you want to go in you can do while standing one two and because of the third hit while standing one two i think is minus 10 but because of the third hit and it's delayable as well like that the opponent will very rarely uh, even attempt to punish because they're going to get hit by that third hit um so it's a fantastic move for closing space starting uh offense or anything like that really good shit a great move um let's see and it's also his 14 frame while standing punish uh let's see what did i fucking miss and then for 15 frames he does have hop kick but as i mentioned earlier hop kick is a piece of shit because it has no range but this move oh my god this move is just gonna fucking ruin everyone's day it's so cheap the move itself has such an odd animation because I, I don't know if i can really explain it but if you look at look at it in slow-mo let me see if i could do this shit that's not even while standing three there we go look at that animation okay so at the beginning of it it doesn't look like the move has started when you push the button because he stays in crouch for several frames before he look at him he goes way even lower and then his leg goes in the air so basically the point is based on the animation this move looks a lot faster than it is but it's 15 frames so Another cheap fucking thing about the reason it the the uh, uh, consequence of it looking so fast is that it recovers faster. It looks like it recovers. Hold on. It looks like it recovers worse than it actually does. So this move is minus 12 on block, and 12 is not good. But because it looks like it starts late, it also looks like it ends later than it does. And what happens is, you do this move, it gets blocked, and they try to fucking jab punish it like an idiot. Let me set this guy to tech roll, and let me set this shit to stand guard. So if this asshole tries to jab punish it, there, look at... You are already recovered right here. At this point, you can duck. So, they're trying to jab punish it, and you can duck under their jab and fucking do another one. It happens so often. They have to be just so sharp to punish this because of the way the animation looks. As soon as Fang's uh, right leg touches the ground, it's like you have just one moment to punish, and then you can duck under the jabs. And, man, people get so fucking pissed. This is what I was talking about. This is the way you piss people off with this character. And pissing people off with Fang is really important because you can't rely on some move that's just really abusable. You have to do just multiple, I know this shit and you don't know this shit. So let me fuck you up for it. Uh, you got to do that kind of strat all day long. While standing three, super fucking cheap. It's one of his tag bufferable moves. You can get a ton of damage off of it. Uh, this is an easy combo real easy let's try it again i'll try a little bit harder combo maybe i'll try a little easier combo oh my god fuck it whatever anyway you get what i'm trying to say it's a good fucking launcher uh it's taggable and it's super fucking great fantastic launcher i mean it's also one of his most important um 
one of his most important moves uh, from crouch. It has much better range than hop kick. It is a very good move. You, you can also do it from crouch dash. It's a, it's a great move. If you don't want to use, I like using crouch dash 2 to mix up crouch dash 1, but you can also use crouch dash 3. The reason I don't is because I think crouch dash 2 looks a lot visually like crouch dash 1. They look similar. Uh, so the startup animation will cause the opponent to duck at times, while this move doesn't look like anything. It just looks like while standing three. So, I mean, it's just a great move. Watch out for it. Use it as often as you can. Uh, remember, it's tag bufferable. I mean, it's super great. Fantastic move. Uh, and I think that covers his while standing punishers. So, you know what I'm going to do? This shit is starting to take a little longer than I thought it would. S and uh, yeah, the internet knows what's up. Eris needs a cigarette. So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to stop recording this shit and I'm going to come back after a cigarette and then tell you guys more. I'm only like one fifth done. So there's a shitload of stuff to still talk about. Anyway, so give me a minute, guys. I got to have a cigarette. I'm freaking out. Uh, the the painkillers are kicking in. So give me a couple minutes and I'll be back. <laughs> 